All right. Sister Gwen hasn't found her way in for the camera yet, but that's okay. <laughs> Huh? Now, why are you gonna put me on blast, Dwight? <laughs> I'm not putting you on blast. Oh my goodness! I just want to say to everybody oh, again that your sister is here with us from Florida. Oh, yes. that's nice. Oh, nice. Nice. So, yeah. Pamela, Jesse, that's Gwen's Hi. sister from Hi. Florida. Hi. Hello, Gwen, sister. How are you? Nice to have you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. Good. Hi, Douglas. Hi. <laughs> Who was that? Who was that <laughs> so Pam, there are two Douglases right. and two Barb's. Oh, okay. So yes. They all gonna answer. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. Your word is true. And so now we pause to reflect on your word. We open up our hearts and minds to hear what you will say to us, and we are thankful. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Amen. Everybody good? Amen. Yes. Yes. All right. With this blade, turn around. That blade, cut trees off. All of my. This blade. So let's look at our scripture for the day, unless there are questions. Look at James chapter 5. James chapter 5, and what we want to do is read the first six verses of James chapter 12, 5. I would like someone to read from the King James Version first, and then we do a different version second. Is that all right? Yes. I have the King James Version. Thank you, Sister Jenny. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Mm -hmm. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers oh, who have raked down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Thank you very much. And who has a different version? I have the passion. Thank you. <clears throat> Listen, all who are rich. For it's time to weep and howl over the misery that will overtake you. Your rich riches lie rotting, your fine clothing eaten by moth, and your gold and silver are corroded as a, as a witness against you. You have hoarded up treasure for the last days, but it will become a fire to burn your flesh. Listen. Can't you hear the cries of the laborers over the wages you fraudulently held back from their, those who worked for you? The cries for the justice of those you've cheated have reached the ears of the Lord of armies. You have indulged yourself with every luxury and pleasure this world offers, but you're only stuffing, stuffing your heart full of a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered good and innocent people who have no power to defend themselves. All right, thank you all very much. That sounds nice. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> um, just, um, just, just, I want to remind you that James was writing to the church, to the Jewish believers that had been scattered abroad because of the persecution of the church. So they weren't in one lo location together. They weren't in one place where they could gather together. So he was writing to all these believers 
who had been scattered abroad. And James is one of the earliest gospel uh, by, uh, books of the Bible that's written. And it was written about less than 30 years after Jesus had died and resurrected. And so there, James talks about money in a particular kind of way. All up until this time, he's been talking about how we have to live particular lives, how we have to do particular things, how we have to trust in God and how we have to hear the word and do the word. He's talked to us about um, how we um, live close to God and that the spirit is in us. And so we have to surrender to God. Last week we talked about being humble before God, surrendering to his will. And then he starts in chapter five to talk about money about rich people. The second thing I want you to understand about the church at that time is that it was full of, there was not really a good middle class. Either you were very rich or you were very poor. And so there weren't a whole lot of people in between. Now there had to be some rich people in, this congreg in these congregations for James to take the time and write to them about these particular things. So it's not necessarily that they were wealthy, that that was the problem. What was the problem? How they were, what they were doing with their wealth. What they did with the things that they have. What did they do with the things that they have? What does is, what is the scripture tell us that they did with the work, that the, with the money that they had? They hoarded it. Hoarded it. Yeah. They hoarded it? Yeah. I know y'all watch the TV show Hoarders. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so what do what happens during the TV show Hoarders? They get buried in all of the stuff they're piling up. Why do, why do people they say become, they hoard stuff? It's think, never enough. <laughs> it becomes more important to them than, than anything. Their stuff. So, it's like it's like a mindset. Mm, a mindset. It's something a that people don't know they're hoarding, do they? I'm sorry. I, it affects your a person ability. don't know they're hoarding, do they? Yeah, sometimes they do. <laughs> oh. So I think one of, one of the things that the preacher talked about today was a kingdom mindset and the kingdom culture. And so mm -hmm. this particular yeah. mindset was not about the kingdom, but it was about getting more. And so, yes, you have a lot of stuff, but when you watch the TV show Hoarders, they never feel like they have enough stuff. Mm. When, you, when, when people who are hoarders, they got stuff. They just can't stop buying stuff or getting stuff or collecting stuff. It tends to be a replacement of something else too. Like some of them have lost children or lost something that was important to them and so... Okay. Their reaction is to just get stuff. They don't really care about this stuff. It doesn't matter what the stuff is. It could be garbage, but it's just okay. the stuff gives them comfort. That's, that's a good point. So the stuff is a substitution for what it is that they should have. So there is this stuff as a substitution and they never feel like they are sated. They, are, they never have enough. It never gets to be, I have enough of these things. And so the, the, James writes to the wealthy to talk about how they hoarded these things. And I think as Sister Angie mentioned that this is a substitution for something else. What would they be substituting money for? Prestige. Prestige. Prestige, I think that's good. That's good. Substitute money for happiness. Happiness. They think, well, they think that money makes them happy. Mm. Power. <laughs> Some people. Power. Yeah. Peace of mind, perhaps. Okay. Satisfaction, satisfy something that's lacking. Mm -hmm. Fear of power. They didn't have a spiritual life. They're empty. So they're trying to fill that emptiness that they'll never be able to fill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just, they, they, feel, they feel some emptiness in their lives by this money. So let's open our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 
First Timothy chapter six, verses six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. First what? Timothy chapter six, verses six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I know flipping pages is hard. <laughs> okay. All right. First Timothy chapter six, verses six through ten. Someone read for us. I have King James. Good. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry, can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and, and um, into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Thank you. So the love of money is what? The root of all evil. Yes. And so what are, we, what are we as Christians supposed to love? God. 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 We're supposed to love God. Mm -hmm. And so when James is writing to the people in, in his epistle, he's writing to people who have substituted God with money, with wealth, mm -hmm. with power, with prestige. And so instead of worshiping God, they're worshiping Thing. money. money. Instead of worshiping God, they're mm -hmm. worshiping stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really interesting how he begins to talk to them, not in any sort of pleasant way, but a way to help them see. He uses really clear language to help them see the kind of damage they're doing to themselves and to other people around them because of their attachment to money. I, I, I read a devotional maybe a week ago or so, um, and it was talking about worship. And the, the writer of this devotional says that we all worship. We were created to worship. Now, whether we worship God, or we worship our children, or we worship our family, or we worship food, or we worship money, or we worship sports, or we worship our cars, we are all worshiping something. Something is catching our attention. We are, we are all, all of us, because we, we got created this thing within us so that we will be drawn to worship. And so what the enemy does is place substitutes in our lives so that we don't worship God, we worship the substitute. That could be my prestige, that could be my ego, that could be my reputation, it could be my intelligence, it could, intelligence, it could be my gifts, it could be my abilities but we're all worshiping something. James wanted to write to the church to make certain that they got their worship straight, that as they're yielding themselves to God, as they're humbling themselves to God, as they're being doers of the word, that they are worshiping God and that only God is occupying that space in their heart where they would worship, not money, not stuff, not things. Because when we collect things, we never have enough things. We can always have enough things. And so we see money as something that I collect. And so James here says that these people were hoarding the money. They were hoarding the money. They were bringing it in and keeping <coughs> it and saving it and not necessarily using it as a tool for God's goodness. They weren't using their money as a support of the ministry. They were using their money to get more of it. And he said to them, weep and wail 
because of the misery that is coming on you. Whenever we substitute something for God, we are in for a life of misery, whether that is money or whether that is our family or stuff or things. Whenever something else becomes God, we are in for a life of misery. What's the first commandment? No other God before me. Thou shalt have how many other gods? No, three, God. nine, three, no other. Nine. <laughs> Thou shalt have how many? No, no, no nada. And hey, there are the, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say that uh, <laughs> back in the old days when I used to travel around and lecture to kids, one other thing. But mute your microphone so we're not at point. Burned up. Excuse your me. microphone. Just mute your microphone. I'm just trying to not have double. I used to go out with kids and I would take a take a dollar bill and I crumble the dollar bill up and throw it in a trash can. And uh, tap the screen. Don't yeah, there's your microphone lower left. There you go. Wow. And I would um uh, take the dollar bill, crumble it up, throw it in a trash can. And then I said now, would any of you normally go into the trash can for any reason? No. Who's willing to go in the trash can and get the dollar? Every hand in the room goes up. Mm. And I said to them, I said, now, understand this. This is a dollar that you're not going to get because I'm going to take it back. And in fact, one time I had to borrow a dollar because I didn't have a dollar on me. So I said, for a dollar that you're not going to get, that isn't even mine, I have taken your mind, your imagination, and put it in a trash can. Money is not everything. Money is a tool. Mm -hmm. It's no different than a hammer or a screwdriver. There are things that we need to do. Why do we pay tithes? Because we've got, the church has work to do that requires the heat to be paid, the bricks to be laid, or whatever else. So money is a tool. And the thing with hoarders, it's not just that they collect stuff, it's that they never want to let the stuff go. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Fine, get a lot of money together. But then if all it does is sit, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. It's no different than people who, um, who sit in Sunday school day after day after day after day and can't even begin to lead somebody to Christ. You got a lot of information, and all it does is sit there. It's sit there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wait. Thank you. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to understand that when stuff gets in front of God, we got the wrong thing happening and we are in for a life of misery and we are setting ourselves up for great disappointment and destruction and so our attitude about these things <clears throat> reflects the god we serve my attitude about money my attitude about intelligence my attitude about my gifts and abilities all that reflects the god we serve and so it's important that we as believers we who are examples, we who are kingdom ambassadors, that we would be in places to show the world how this thing works, to be demonstrating how these things work. I have a cousin who used to uh, be a restaurant <coughs> manager at a um, hotel in Anderson, Indiana. Anderson, Indiana is the international headquarters for the Church of God, and he would say to me, uh, that he would hate for the national convention to be to come in because the church people were the worst tippers he had ever seen. <laughs> they were extremely demanding. They wanted what they wanted when they wanted, but they were just among the worst tempers. And th this is an international organization. So it wasn't just one culture. It was many cultures, but the church people were among the most stingy they had ever run into. Our, how we use the tool, as Doug said, the tool that, the tools that God has given us is a reflection of who God is in our lives. Look at what James says to these people. He says, you, uh, verse four, the wages you fail to pay the workers who mold your fields are crying out against you. Whenever we get money by illegal means or immoral means, it will never serve its purpose. It might look like you're prosperous, 
but it will never serve the purpose that God has for you. It will never be what God would have it to be. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that God doesn't necessarily require us to be poor, but he requires us to use our money as he, see fit, as he sees fit. We have to check with him about everything. Just as we talked about in James chapter four, when we submit ourselves to God, isn't that what he says? Mm -hmm. James chapter four said, I submit myself to God. What does it mean to be submissive? Mm -hmm. He will. Yeah. will. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yield to his will. I yield yes. to his will. Bow what down do, to his will. What do I yield to his will? Your spirit, my, will. Will. my will. All the my will, myself. Everything. Mm -hmm. right. Everything. Everything? Yes. Mm -hmm. Including my money. Yep. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, or I, indeed. Or I can keep my money to myself. <laughs> what good is it for yourself? What you gonna do with all that? <laughs> the more I have, the more I have. The more you want, <laughs> too. Ooh -wee. And so there, there are places where we will yield <coughs> things that we consider spiritual to God. We will yield that time to God. We will yield mm. those things to God, but we won't yield our entire lives to God. We keep some things back for ourselves. Mm. And so if we're going to be submitting to God, because he said, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he will flee. If I can't submit myself to God, then I open myself up for the attack of the devil, for the attack mm -hmm. of the enemy. And I won't have the ability to resist the devil mm -hmm. if I'm not submissive. And so James is saying to these people that how I make my money, how I use my money should reflect the God I say I serve. Mm. Those things should reflect the God I say I serve. And, and this, 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 this passage is written about, written about wealthy people, but it's not just wealth of riches. It's wealth of anything we have. How I use my time, how I use my talents, how I use my gifts and abilities. All of those things should reflect the God I say I serve. I can't just save them up for myself so that I have it and I have complete use, but I have to yield all of these things, all of my work, to God, the God I say I serve. And I cannot have a substitution. I cannot have somebody else or something else that sits on the throne of my heart other than God. If I do, then I have become an idol worshiper. And what did God do with the idol worshipers? Ram out of the temple. I'm sorry? Kicked them out. He kicked them he out. Kicked them out. And so we cannot be <clears throat> idol worshipers. Mm -hmm. James chapter, chapter, chapter 5, verse 2 says, Your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. You <coughs> held on mm -hmm. to things for so long and not used them as God would have us use them. They now become useless. Mm -hmm. I've held on, and again, it could, it, he's talking about money, but it could be my gifts and abilities. I've held on to them for some reason for so long. Now they become useless. Your riches are rotted and you have holes in your clothes. So that's not yeah. just idol, I-D-O-L, it's I-D-L-E. I'm sorry? It's not just idol, I-D-O-L, it's I-D-L-E. Exactly. I'm not doing anything with the stuff that God has given me. I think Doug mentioned earlier that we get fat on the word of God and we never use it. Mm -hmm. We never share it with anybody. Mm -hmm. We never talk about it with anybody. We never have conversations about it with anybody. I just store it up so I can feel holy. <laughs> so I can feel spiritual. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'm just the so-and-so and all mm -hmm. of this. Yep. <laughs> and it's important oh. to know that if I never use what it is that God has given me, James here says that the stuff we try to save for ourselves will be rotted and useless. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
And as the, the preacher of the day used Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says that we should do what? Seek the kingdom first. Mm -hmm. Seek the kingdom first and his righteousness. And then Hello, what? Kitty. Everything else. All these other All things, things will be added. And see, we often don't believe God. Or we act like we don't believe God mm -hmm. because we seek other things. When God said to us very carefully, seek first his kingdom and all these other things will be added unto you. And so as believers, I have to make certain that I am not hoarding the things that God has given me, the knowledge that God has given me, all that's supposed to be useful for the kingdom of God, the, mm -hmm. my gifts and abilities, all that's supposed to be useful for the kingdom of God. All of those things are supposed to be useful. And James says, in particular, our resources, our physical resources. He says, your wealth has rotted and moss have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will testify against you. Mm -hmm. The fact that your resources will, will corrode and waste away, testify against you that God has given you something that mm -hmm. you chose not to use in the way that he wanted you. And James says that you're going to be eating your, they're going to eat your flesh like fire. Mm -hmm. And that's an example of how you are, it's a, it's a sort of a, a painful sort of experience. So that, that this is slowly but surely you're being eaten alive. And it's, it's, it's a slowly, it's a slow process that will burn your skin, burn your flesh like fire. And so we slowly fall away into apostasy when I put something else above God. I slowly fall away into some other sorts of thinking when I don't seek first the kingdom, but I seek the other things first. And so it's not a it's not a, 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 a one day and then you're down the drain. It is a slow process where I am gradually being led away from God because I've chosen to focus on something else other than him. The scripture says I should lay up treasures in heaven. Isn't that what it says? Yes. And not on earth. Mm -hmm. Lay up treasures. How do I lay up treasures in heaven? Doing God's will. Yeah. Doing God's will. Bringing others yeah. to Christ. Bringing others to Christ. Anybody else? Ministering to those in need. Ministering to others in need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, encouraging others. Encouraging others. Mm -hmm. Oh, where is that? You remember the parable? Is it? Uh, it's not the parable, but it's the story Jesus told. I think it's Matthew chapter twenty-five about the sheep and the goats. <laughs> you all remember that? Matthew. Yeah, we remember. Yeah. Matthew. Is it twenty-five or twenty-six? Twenty-five is the ten virgins. Uh, then it must be 26. The sheep and the goats is 26. Yes, thank you. No, Matthew wait a minute. Chapter. It is 25. I'm sorry. It's 2531. Okay. So Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and his believers' followers about the sheep and the goats. And what was the difference between the sheep and the goats? Matthew 25. Sheep, no, it's not. Matthew chapter, chapter 25. And we begin at verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And as he shall, the sheep, he shall shut, set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then the king shall say unto them on his right hand, come blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee and hungered, or fed and fed thee, thirsty and gave thee drink, or when saw you a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee, or sick, and we saw or when saw we thee sick, or in prison and came to thee. Verse 40 of Matthew chapter 25, the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it to the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. Dif- I'm sorry. Amen. The difference between the sheep and the goats mm-hmm. is that they live the life of Jesus Christ on this earth. They did the things that Jesus did while he was on this earth. Mm-hmm. Yes, they ministered to people. They brought others to Christ, but they were doing things that showed love to other people. They didn't have to be asked. They didn't have to have a fundraising event. They didn't have to draw a lot of attention to themselves because they said, we don't know when we saw you hungry and thirsty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as you did it to the least of these. And see, sometimes we want to do our service while it will be seen. Mm-hmm. Right. Because if it's seen, what happens? You get, you get, you get the glory. Yeah, look at her. Look at I she. get the glory. Yeah, but I surely you answered. have your reward. Now. Uh-huh. That's what the scripture says. Yes. I have my reward. My reward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But James says, if I do my stuff so I can be seen, then he says, my 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 uh my gold and my silver are corroded and that corrosion mm-hmm. will testify mm-hmm. against me and will mm-hmm. eat my flesh like fire mm-hmm. and so what james is trying to tell the in this epistle is that it's okay if you are rich use your riches for the glory of god you don't need mm-hmm. to have a lot of attention you don't need to have a lot of fanfare I mean, there are many parables that Jesus talked when he talked about the Pharisees who would go around and pray on the street corner so people would see them and would be seen of men. Mm -hmm. And he would compare that to the people, to the man who would bow his head and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Mm -hmm. And Jesus compared the people who would go in and present their offerings and lay out large amounts of money. But the widow who had just a mite she presented and jesus said she gave more than all the others it's important for us to get straight in our head where our resources come from amen get straight in our heart and our mind where our resources come from so that we can use them for whose glory his glory glory. where did they come from god God. Everything we have. Mm-hmm. So, Everything. did you make your own money? No. no. You got a printing press over there making money? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you do so I can collect the reward. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah, 565 that's, Jefferson. <laughs> I was waiting to see who said they had the printing press. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> But we talk about it sometimes, like I made this amount of money, I made these things, or I Mm -hmm. did these things. Mm -hmm. And we want to be, we can say those things, but we want to be conscious that whatever God has for us, Mm -hmm. He has given it to us. Mm -hmm. It's not me making it myself, it is God giving it to me. Amen. I tell people all the time. Amen. I tell people all the time that somehow. God has convinced the University of Michigan to pay me for doing ministry every day. I don't know how he did it, but he has convinced them to pay me to do his work. Amen. Amen. And I always, you have to see what you do as work for God. Mm -hmm. Whether that's calling people on the phone or sending text messages, God gave you a phone Mm -hmm. and text message so you can talk to people and reach them for Mm him. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have Facebook, not to, not to go to war with each other, but to encourage one another and share goodness with one another. Mm-hmm. And so we have to get back the tools. I think like that word that Doug used earlier. Mm-hmm. We have to get back the tools that God has given us and use them for his glory. 
James says that all this material stuff, all this stuff is going to vanish away. Yeah. Verse five says you lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence, the international version says, and you have fattened yourself as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered, murdered innocent ones, those who are not even opposing you. So all the things that we think are important, all those things we think are important will one day vanish away. Vanish, vanish. They will one day vanish mm -hmm. away. Mm. They will all one day vanish away. I remember when it was the second car I bought in my life. It was a Ford Probe and I loved that car. I would sit in it and I felt like it was hugging me. It was small, it's okay, but I just loved it and I drove it, I enjoyed it. And yeah. it was just something I loved to do. I kept that car almost 10 years. We know. Because I loved it. I really loved that car. Then God moved him on along. I liked riding in that car. I liked what I looked but he like got him in that car. Mm -hmm. Got all about that car. And I was on my way home from church <laughs> one Wednesday and someone ran into the back of that car mm. and I stood mm. on the side of the road and Deep watched crack. that car burn. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. It mm. caught on fire so quickly. I just stood there and watched it burn. And the Lord yes. said, all these things will pass away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I had, yeah. to get, I had to get stuff in the right order. A car didn't mm -hmm. make me. It was a tool to get me from where mm -hmm. I need the place I need to go from place mm -hmm. to place. It was mm -hmm. a tool. It didn't make me look any better. It didn't make me feel any better. It was a tool that God has given me. And as I watched it burn, I remember God reminding me that I have prepared other things for you. And yes, you can move along to another mm -hmm. one, but I prepared mm -hmm. other things for you. But if I hold so tightly to this stuff, Mm -hmm. then I won't have capacity, as the preacher said today, mm -hmm. I won't have capacity to receive even more for him mm -hmm. because I'm holding on to this stuff. Right. And so it's really important that we reflect on our own lives how <clears throat> and, and see what are we holding on to mm -hmm. that God can use for his glory and his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Is it my money? Is it my time? Is it my resources? What are we hoarding so that God is not getting the glory from our lives? What are we holding on to? What are we fighting with God about? What have we not submitted to his will and his way so that he might get the glory from our lives? Because as, as, as the more I give, as the preacher said today, the more I do what God asked me to do, the greater capacity I have to receive from him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And I'm always asking God for stuff. <laughs> I'm always, I always have my menu out. <laughs> <laughs> bless this, bless that, do this, do that, move here, move there. <laughs> but I'm never yielding the things that God has given me so that he would get the glory from my lives. And sometimes it's just time. Sometimes I could give God and say, God, here's an hour of my, here is this hour of my day. Use it to your glory. Sometimes it's just that small of a thing. It can be my money. It can be my financial resources. Sometimes it's my time and my talent, my intelligence. Well, sometimes your time is more valuable than the money. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. You know, Say that. Yes, indeed. For $50 and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have the money and can't even find nobody to pay to do something so you can do it come on well, especially when you need sleep that money don't mean nothing and so sometimes we are so 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 uh, careful with our time because we know how valuable it is we won't even yield our time to the master 
Somebody said time is money. On the job. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that ain't in here. <laughs> Not all money is good money. Mm -mm. That's it's true. true. Not all good is God. That's but right. Amen. Time is valuable. Time is valuable. And you can't Ooh. get it back. But God well, you sure could. requires our time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there are yes. things that we could use. So, you know, when, when, when I'm sorry, I said he requires everything of us. Everything, we yes. We give him everything. Everything. It's hard to do sometimes, but that's the requirement. Everything. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to do, but we have to remind ourselves. And we have these opportunities to remind ourselves that God requires everything. One of the things that I think is really interesting to me as I again read uh, the, the, the parable Jesus tells in Matthew chapter 25 about the sheep and the goats. The sheep and the goats were not judged for their sins. He didn't say you were a liar, you stole money out of your mama's purse, you committed adultery. He didn't say, when he separated the sheep and the goats, it was not for their sins. Is for what they did with the time God gave them. What they did with the resources God gave them. They weren't necessarily judged for the sins they committed because you know, all that's under the blood, but mm -hmm. God began to judge them based on what they did, the character that they carried themselves with and the work that they did on this earth. Did that reflect God to the world? <clears throat> more than anything God wants us to show love not to hoard all the love and keep it all in <laughs> but to give and to share the love in other sorts of ways and now that you know we can't hug each other and shake hands and all that other stuff in public we have to find different ways of showing mm -hmm. love to people amen we have to find different mm -hmm. opportunities to do that because other than if we don't we will hoard God's love and it'll become, mm -hmm. we'll become fat on it and it'll become useless for us. We will become frustrated and angry because we have not done what God asked us to do with his word. Okay. We wanna look for opportunities to give, opportunities to serve and opportunities to submit everything to the will of Jesus Christ. Cause he's in charge. Amen. Mm -hmm. Whether we like to believe it or not, he's in charge. <laughs> he's driving the bus and we just are along for the ride. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn to yield to him, yield to him everything. I think as Sister Angie said, everything. Mm -hmm. And that's a daily process. Yes. God, I give you this day, use it. God, I give you this hour, use it for your glory. Put someone in my path today, God, that I might be able to minister. Give me an opportunity to give of the things you have given me. Bless me with that opportunity. I don't know if that's the prayer we pray <laughs> while we send God to the prison and the nursing home and the hospital. As we send God to go bless our children and our families and heal this and deliver them. Do we ask God to bless us so that we have the opportunity to give so that he would be glorified? Mm. Are we showing love or are we hoarding? Mm. Oh. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any good things you want to share with us? I think that was a good word. Mm -hmm. Thank the yes. Lord. Yep. Yeah. All right, so next week we'll continue working with John James chapter five. We'll talk about being patient. Ah, there's that word. Being patient. Oh, wow. 
That's one of the things, because the other, other character traits that God wants to develop in us, humility. He wants us to yield all our resources to him. He wants us to be loving, but he also wants to develop a sense of patience with us. Not necessarily patience with other people, but if you read James chapter 5, it's patience with God and mm. patience with yourself. Mm -hmm. We All often right. want God to move when I want God to move. <laughs> and if God moves when I want God to move, what does that make me? Yeah. <laughs> You're not in charge. <laughs> if God moves when I want God to move, that means that I'm God's boss. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think any of us is the boss of God. I'm trying to see if I see <laughs> bossy people in the room. Oh, no. <laughs> You've been relieved of your position. <laughs> <laughs> but we do want to begin to look at how James asks God's people to express and experience patience. Mm. All right. Okay. Let's pray together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for showing us, God, how we should be grateful and not hoarding, how we should give and not just collect for ourselves. We ask you to forgive us for those times and we have not been giving and now bless us as we are be giving to all those we meet. And we give you glory now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.